we are starting, uh, I have to uh, um, say it's an honor for me to start in the name of the board of Skillman. And um, the situation is that our uh, honorable board member, uh, Dr. Claude Bayoun, has overtaken to make a short introduction uh, of this uh, important webinar, who is setting a milestone for the future of Skillman. And, um, and, but we have no, we know that she is now in China for an urgent business activity. And, uh, and we think, uh, as we have experiences, that the China network could be destroyed or have a disruption uh, to our, our contacts. So I'm prepared to overtake from the board member, Dr. Claude Bayoun, the introduction. So uh, looking first back, I'm starting, and when we have to look back, then we have to look back. Uh, we can't look long back, but we want to look to 2023. And uh, we had an incredible uh, experience at uh, Latvia last year in our Skillman International Forum. And therefore as well, my compliments uh, uh, to the uh, people from Latvia who are here, from the ministry and from Ogre Technical School, who have supported us in the organization, in the huge organization of the Skillman International Forum 2023. So it was really uh, 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 an incredible good expertise of an international high level uh, uh, forum. Uh, we are doing that yearly and uh, the participants collectively shaped the future of education, the offering of innovative ideas to redefine learning approaches, uh, a, a renewed emphasis on values. When I look to this annual uh, Skillman International Forum, then I have to say next year, it was really, I think, uh, um, uh, the top of the mountain uh, already. And, and uh, the Latvian Ministry of Education and Science, who has uh, uh, prepared this uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, our network, uh, has done it, uh, and we have done it together in the European Year of Skills and Partnerships with Europea Latvia. The European Training Foundation was an important partner in the preparation and, of course, the Asian Development Bank. And we had um, a top result. Uh, when I would summarize, then we know where we are now, then I would say uh, the emerging megatrends, the emphasis of the role of qualifications, the critical contribution of micro-credentials to meet involving skill demands. The forum's focus extended to local responses to global trends, emphasizing green and digital transitions, uh, innovation and active citizenship. So I think that is the situation what we could overtake from last year, 2023. Now we are looking ahead uh, to 2024. Uh, we are inviting at, in these uh, weeks, the stakeholders and key stakeholders uh, for the TVET Alliance Summit in 2024. We hear this morning many uh, uh, updates about this, but of course, when you say we, a Skillman network, then we speak about the TVET alliance. A TVET alliance uh, with Ivita, with AIR, with ENI, with a Skillman network, with April, and many, I think, important decision makers and international organizations 
from the world. Uh, this year, uh, of with the local university Dortmund. Uh, 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 we will hear more this morning about them. They are doing a very good job and, and uh, we need to have them in the core of our network. And we will do it with the Lincoln Hope Uni uh, with the Liverpool Hope University. And, and uh, we will have uh, Dr. Craig Marsh here who will uh, speak about the uh, Liverpool Hope University and the future of, of this incredible university as well. So looking ahead and coming to a, to a ground, I'm only speaking here about the introduction. We are envisioning an inclusive and resilient society where TVET is a pillar for innovative curriculum development we are speaking about the shaping of the society of tomorrow. A joint statement in this alien summit will be crafted to influence the future of Tibet, making a responsive sector that anticipates and adapts megatrends, fostering inclusivity. I think that's it coming to the point uh, as an introduction. I hope uh, you uh, have appetite for the whole webinar now. Thank you, Hutz. Uh, who's the next speaker? Is is uh, your role to introduce uh, because uh, Claude is not here? So please. Sorry, uh, I don't have the this uh, this uh, the the presentation here. Uh, okay. But I, can you help me for this, please? Yes, of course, of course. Yes, I think uh, by memory that now is time for the any introduction. I think yes. uh, uh, yes. Gabriel Manuel oh. is his turn. Yes, very sorry. Okay, thank you for giving me the floor. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Well and clear. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, and good morning or afternoon or even evening because I see <laughs> that uh, many regions in the world are uh, engaged here, and uh, we are so happy once again to to be with the uh, uh, international family because um, once again we have to repeat on and on that uh, that excellence is about internationalization. Um, among other things. So thank you, Giovanni. Thank you, Skillman colleagues. And I thank you also on behalf of the ATF because our um, cooperation is uh, right now four years behind. We started uh, four years ago, I think in more uh, systematic way, cooperating with you and, uh, you know, um, helping each other for, I think, one key also topic for vocational excellence, which is networking for vocational excellence. I think our networks are good examples of um, how to engage international partners that uh, we are working towards, let's say, common goals despite the uh, differences in the regions and also in the economies and also in the challenges that society that are, is facing also in these turbulence uh, times on which also um, for the European Union, which is also uh, our main um, one of our main goals supporting the European Commission also you know in this uh, um, in this domain in this policy uh, we are facing difficult times so um, talking about uh, vocational excellence project from the ETF um, uh, colleagues also asked to me and we are talking about uh, how to face the future the future what is next well, for us, what is next is 2024 and 2025, because uh, our planning is uh, always uh, multi-annual, because also we are moving and frame it into the um, ETF strategy, which goes, European Training Foundation strategy, will go till 2027. So we look in the next four years 
through the lens of vocational excellence as uh, one of our main uh, activities. And we work there, let's say the project is uh, our uh, action in the European Training Foundation, let's say, could be now um, um, defined uh, as twofold. One is the network for excellence, which is our natural ground and our natural way of uh, interacting with you all in the International Community of Vocational Excellence. And there we focus we focus a lot in policy learning. So what we uh, continue doing from our, uh, let's say, distinctive uh, role in the international scenario is to uh, mobilize, uh, let's say, COVES partnerships in different thematic areas on which uh, uh, we learn from each other and also we transmit excellence to other parts of the system. Uh, from the last year, uh, the last year we concentrated in several domains, uh, also uh, coming and captured in our self-assessment tool, which are uh, lifelong learning, entrepreneurial role of center of excellence, world-based learning, autonomy and public-private partnerships, um, uh, green, going green, uh, digitalization of teaching and learning, uh, career guidance, et cetera, et cetera. This year, 2024, we are mm, closing down part of these uh, uh, partnerships. So um, we are wrapping up this, which uh, it is uh, in process to be reported in several publications that you will um, also uh, join. And we are in this process of, uh, you know, internal kitchen to prepare a lot of information on lessons learned that we had during uh, last years, but also looking at the future mainly in four um, big activities, uh, partnership, thematic partnership, which will be the continuation on going, going green, more, face, more famous, uh, known uh, by Greta, Green in Responses to Excellence through Thematic Actions. We will jump into the second phase, second life of digitalization of teaching and learning. And I have, we have here Philip also um, among us who is leading this activity. Then we are going to launch and we are, let's say, um, be part of um, uh, next discussions and practices on how entrepreneurial ecosystems are uh, taking place, uh, which is entre COVES partnership and also social inclusion. So the four, these four thematic areas are going to be our um, core heart of our intelligence for uh, sharing practices in the next years. This is connected, for example, to several events during the year. In 2024, uh, now in Greta, 15 February, uh, take, take note, we have a session in building green skill ecosystems but also uh, with our partners of uh, uh, PA9 skills of the Danube region platform, we will organize in Vienna 18 and 19 April a discussion on vocational excellence and practices in going green, focusing construction sector and um, energy sectors. So um, another uh, point in the calendar on which we will share with partners, uh, uh, for example, in this case, our intelligence in entrepreneurial role of center of vocational excellence will be the next forums of vocational excellence, uh, which is going to take place 10 and 12 September in Lyon, France. This will be organized with our partners in the European Commission and also our partners in the Campus de Métier et Qualifications, uh, which will be also hosting and are leading in the discussion we are having for organizing this meeting. This is also to be connected in, and in this uh, forum, we will discuss about Africa and the connections between European Union and what is going on in Africa for multiple reasons. Uh, one of those, of course, is for the strategic and geopolitical reasons that uh, also uh, behind that um, is a lot of uh, going on on economy, on social inclusion, but also in migration policies and well-being of a lot of young people in our neighbor um, continent that is not having the right possibilities. We are going to explore there in an African day, also with cases of a center of vocational excellence of our network in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, in, uh, in, I said in Lyon, we are going to organize also a, another discussion with our partners, Belgium partners, Enabel, the week of the 10th June, in Uganda on the role of COVID in Sub-Saharan Africa. So um, having said that also, we leave some space to look at the future with our partner countries. So we will uh, strengthen our uh, cooperation and we will explore more cooperation in our network with in particular Western Balkans, which is for the European Union, 
a priority area for this year and for the years to come. I think I'm going to stop here. Uh, I hope uh, I gave you uh, some indications on how we are moving forward. And um, I think you at least now are more aware that we are busy people also, but always uh, happy and um, to work with you all, uh, with all the friends and partners that I see also around the screen. Thank you very much. Many thank Manuel uh, from our side. <clears throat> and I hope that uh, uh, many members as well are uh, uh, reserving the uh, the September dates uh, in Lyon to 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 support ETF. So we have here as well a scheduled second presentation to this uh, focus on activities of Ene and Skillman by our uh, president uh, Giovanni uh, Grisona. Uh, please, Giovanni, uh, I give you the floor. Thank you, Urs. Uh, Jose, uh, Manuel, thank you very much because uh, you always uh, have the capacity to condensate, concentrate uh, in few words a uh, lot of things that uh, you and we do together. So it's uh, extraordinary uh, seeing how many countries are represented, uh, represented, represented today in the list of participants and how you were mentioning African countries and other um, places where we are moving. Uh, I think uh, it's a global, uh, global movement uh, which is following the excellence. And I have seen also very happy to see in the list of participants our members from uh, from South America, because uh, we have a special plan to stress uh, also South America, which uh, is underrepresented at this moment. So we want to encourage them to take part and to and to take leadership on the initiative. So I'm going to uh, shape the approach of the Skillman to the next period, like you uh, did, Manuel. But uh, I will. Uh, help myself using some uh, slide, if you allow me. So the uh, Skillman Network, as you know, is already extended in many countries, but one of our plans today is to increase the number of countries. So I was mentioning South America because we have a specific ideas on that, but uh, also I was recently invited by the Minister of Education in India. And so we have a, also a special plan for India. And as you probably remember, we had this huge event organized by the members in China, our members in China. So these are the focuses at international level that we are looking now to increase participation, to stress uh, uh, capacity of networking and to have uh, more results in terms of cooperation, peer learning and uh, self-supporting uh, uh, activities among uh, our partners. So the uh, I, I call it uh, like a life cycle because it is a model uh, already running from 2014, the normal approach we have is uh, to um, operate, to create uh, occasions for networking and uh, for, uh, for sharing uh, of uh, learning and experiences uh, in uh, these uh, three steps. One is the moment of the Allianz Summit. Every year we look to the future involving high level stakeholders in preparing the basement for the discussion. And so this basement every year try to identify challenges for the future, which are crucial, which are elements for the life. And then we go to the activities on the ground. We, and I will give you some uh, uh, insight of that. And then we end with the Skillman Forum, the Skillman International Forum, which is every year held in a different country, hosted by one of our incredible members, and uh, which represents the closing of a circle in which we try to envisage the education for the future. So this is the approach, the life cycle approach of the Skillman members is to create a policy uh, visions for the future to write policy papers and one of the important product that we have in the hands is this uh, result of the declaration that uh, Filippo then will uh, start to 
to um, allow us to understand. So the Alliance Summit, which is coming, and we will announce the date uh, in the next days, is always an event in which we can relax a little bit and look to the future. So we find uh, uh, each other, we meet each other in a nice place, and we try to have an immersive discussion in which we envisage what are the uh, topics that we want to put on the floor. So shaping the future of education starts on putting the right question. So mostly we are going in this place uh, out of the normal uh, daily work to try to envisage what are the challenges that we have to face, what are the questions that we want to put on the table. And with these questions, then we move on with our activities. And this, the, the last turn of this was the strategic partnership activation. So we know how much is important. And I have to thank, uh, because here we have the authors of this uh, idea for 2023 that we are going to take as an in, in, in Reddit and to then move for the next steps. And I'm referring to the Ilze Brand, Ilze Buligina, so the Ministry of Education in Latvia. So here, this was the idea, the capacity of the Skillman Network in collaboration with ENE and with ETF uh, uh, more in a large perspective is more concentrated is evident in our networking capacity. So even the strategic partnerships level produces his results and we want to invest in that. So in this regard, I would say to the participants or anyway to our members in general, please take this as a note, take this point as a starting point to work together in the next period. Contact us when you have this uh, uh, need or this uh, intention to stress your strategic partnership at high level, because I know you represent regional governments, you represent ministries of education, ministries of labor. I always, uh, when I go abroad, now I will be back in Turkey. We have this also this ongoing discussion with India, with China. So there is an institutional need to stress strategic partnership and to create a networking even at the ministerial level. So this one part that we want to address in 2024. So moving on in this intention, we go a little bit down and we want to help our members starting from the public ministries of education and whatever, but going deep, going deep and down, helping our members to manage for uh, providing digital credentials to the final beneficiaries and to move from a situation in which the uh, beneficiaries just take certificates in a situation in which they can have deposited in a international bank account their learnings uh, results, the learning accounts. So this uh, is an infrastructure that we have already created. And now I can confirm that everything is working. And we are in condition to receive requests from our members to support them for the digital, for the release of digital badges, for the uh, accreditations. and. Uh, Please contact the Secretariat because now we are moving on. You will receive also, of course, our uh, information, but please contact us at any level you are. It doesn't matter because we can help you to use the digital infrastructure, the learning digital uh, qualification framework of the Skillman Network to release digital badges in an international standard, recognized standard, and to deposit in this uh, international bank the learning, uh, the learning credits of your students. Each student has right to have a digital learning account. And we are at this stage, and Urz also know very well the efforts that we have put on that. So Urz, I'm calling all the participants to contact us to move on in this direction. So another element which is not relevant for European uh, colleagues, but uh, for 
not European colleagues uh, is the implementation of the ex entrepreneurial mobility program, which we have uh, uh, experience from Europe. This is a best practice that we are implementing uh, in uh, supporting uh, uh, governments outside uh, Europe. And if there is someone still uh, again interested in that, uh, please contact us because uh, this is the other uh, important initiative for 2024. Then we will arrive to the Skirman International Forum. This is a picture of last year, and we will finalize these ideas in some conclusion. So please stay on for uh, this, because now today we are launching the call for candidatures. And uh, you are, uh, if you are interested to host the forum, please uh, um, put your voice in this direction. During the year, we will organize uh, together with uh, you, Filippo, Manuel, and Thomas. Uh, now we will see the other presentations, uh, events like workshops, like ever. Every year we do. We have the so-called the peer learning activities in our peer learning groups, so the, the focus groups in which we go deep into the analysis in small groups, and then we produce ideas. So these are incredible opportunity for networking and also for learning because there are training activities. We remember uh, how it was nice uh, to prepare for the international mobility of students. And so many occasions, uh, please stay on, on that because uh, it's something important for us. Finally, there is this plan to extend more the network in South America, but of course we have other countries which we are addressing and working to increase our presence. We are already in 95 countries, but we, we want to extend it. So please, if you have not yet done, subscribe, take your profile, make your profile because now starting from this year, we have this fantastic uh, uh, database, which was extended. We have the roster database of members. If you want to then candidate yourself for consultancy services, for whatever, uh, it's a, at your personal profile, you can introduce this information and create, uh, uh, create information which will be used by other members or by authorities to to get uh, attention to your profile. So I have ended uh, uh, like there will be the, because there will be the screenshot. So this is uh, my contact uh, detail. These are my contact details. Uh, I have uh, ended the uh, URSS uh, in this uh, first stage. Then I will add some word uh, after for the Skillman declaration. Thank you very much uh, to everybody. Many thanks, Giovanni. Uh, and, and many thanks, uh, Manuel for this information to the focus of uh, uh, ETF and, and uh, uh, any uh, possibilities uh, and as well the Skillman Network for 2024. We are coming now to a new part in the webinar that is the part of the uh, important future partnership uh, with two universities. Uh, uh, we, I'm, I'm presenting there uh, Thomas Werner Schröder from the Technical University and as well Craig Marsh from the Liverpool Hope University. And they are uh, giving us both a presentation. It's a big pleasure to have them here. And uh, uh, yes, I'm, I'm giving you the floor uh, and uh, I'm happy that you both could arrange it within your very busy schedule. Many thanks. Thomas, can you start, please? Yes, sure, sure, I can start. Thanks very much. Uh, also, thanks very much, Giovanni, for inviting me here to uh, present uh, our work at uh, Technical University of Dortmund. And um, by the way, Thomas is enough. Werner has only been added or un unveiled very recently by my university. Nobody really knew until six years ago that I had a second name called Werner. <laughs> so, but, so Thomas would be enough. Okay, I allow me to share here a presentation. Um, let me see how it would work here. Let's jump for a game. 
I learned that I only have five minutes. Am I right? I think so. So it's, yeah, it's... we are flexible, uh, professor. Yes. Okay. Oh, thanks very much. I just give you a very, very short uh, overview about what we do, what we did, what our philosophy is. Well, philosophy is a great word, but but what our positions are, our theoretical positions. So what we have to do as a technical university of Dortmund is we. We are in charge for the TVET teacher education at MA level, at level six, with regard to European qualification frameworks. That's our basically breadwinner. Uh, we are commissioned by the state of North Rhine Westphalia. Also, our own position as a chair is to focus on action research, action learning, because we strongly believe that competence development uh, uh, can only be achieved. Uh, certain approaches and which is closely linked to action. This applies to development of TVET systems, which we do internationally and nationally, not only on a macro level as well on a micro level. SPF recently developed a very interesting um, digital system, system um, for the for the practical uh, training or skills development in the metal industry. There are other examples. Um, so you know, we we are very strong and 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 in such development um, um, uh, projects. So uh, one of our core political issues is that we always want um, wherever we are, where we argue, uh, where we fight for T that we want we want that uh, this is systemic approach is allows for vertical permeability, social permeability. Because this is in the end a very valuable precondition for the attractiveness of the TVET system, and um, so uh, and as a society from a societal perspective, it uh, uh, allows in a meritocratic way a manner uh, the, the the best to progress, and that's what we all need and want. So. We focus with our developments on um, topics of dual transition and, of course, internationalization. Here we have strong focus on Southeast Asia. We were strongly involved in um, the creation of um, or building up establishment of the network called uh, the Regional Association for Vocational and Technical Education in Asia. Short rafter um, universities, dual universities to do higher education and TVET who are involved in TVET research and TVET teacher education. And uh, we found uh, found that um, established an online journal about in 2013, and now just yesterday published the 22nd issue. It's an open access journal, so you all have the chance to go there and to read whatever articles have been produced. Must be something about 200 now by now, no more than that, 250 maybe. And of course, if you if you intend to publish here, we have calls for paper two issues per year, and uh, uh, so please please feel free to to submit. Okay. Uh, when I look onto Southeast Asia and other societies, what I find is, um, um, well, if, if, if I drafted here an overview about my understanding of TVET, so on the right hand side, within the green field, we have we have macro, meso, micro, and supra above. So it's a policy level mainly. In many countries, the policy level is strongly dependent, strongly dependent on uh, knowledge transfer and policy consultancy from international organizations. From from international donor organizations, and as you know, as you are pretty aware of, you know, um, um, it was dependent on the background of those consultants. They will say what what we strongly believe is the right way. What's often missing here is um, um, a, a national capacity of experts. Who are who are extremely educated and well educated in such a manner that they can, with their own intercultural background or cultural background, can inform, find solutions, find their own solutions, and can inform the policy level. At the same time, at the same time, these experts in my world would would be in charge as well in creation, in creating innovation, and at the operational level. That's where the that's where 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 innovation has to happen in order to. To be in line with the labor market or, uh, or, or, or even academia progressing. So um, what's what's often missing is um, vocational education as a science as a self reliant academic discipline, which is which is 
development oriented, innovation oriented, process oriented, and which is a charge for the education of, of uh, capacities or training of capacities, which will which will then be in charge for the administration of political of political uh, decisions, because that's something which is often missing too between the policy level and the operational level. Who is administrating the decisions and and, and ensuring that that um, uh, this uh, the decisions are being brought onto the road. Um, a second very important point from <clears throat> that we see and where we engage uh, is um, the question: How do we transform? innovation which is happening which is happening all around us and at, at, at university level at research and development level um but but sometimes mostly these innovations never really make it to the market and so the question is why and often the way we organize the way we organize TVET and germany um it is like we we, we observe the market and and we, we see what's happening in the market and and then and then we change according to the changes in the labor market. We change our TVET system. So our approach is to take the shortcut and to try to identify interesting innovation and 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 to bring them directly into the labor market. So uh, sorry, bring them directly into the TVET system. And um, so the TVET system might have an impact on the market as well and on the way our society is being shaped and changed. This is just a very short overview about our understanding of, of competence development, of learning. So it's action orientation in our research approaches, system focusing on system development, might be the entirety of the system, might be a, a, a small system like a digital assistance system, um, um, and competence development. Um, you know this. And then, of course, this might then lead towards transfer outlook for what we have on our plate in 2024 is we will go on well as in UNESCO chair that um, um, we, 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 we promised that we would go on to promote vocation education as a self-reliant development oriented scientific discipline and we will do this of course with our partners from uh, Southeast Asia we want to set up a PhD program um, uh, in for vocational education, international PhD program, which of course uh, should be action and development oriented as well. Um, we we'll focus this year on uh, transferring two technological proven technological innovations uh, with regard to the dual transition. Uh, from the Rural University Alliance Technical University of Dortmund. It's not alone, there's a stretch of 40 kilometers all along the rural area. There are three universities with um, 1,200 professors and 120,000 students. So there's a lot of innovation going on. And um, um, it's always, it's difficulty always is how to bring this to the ground and to the market. So we want to to um, to find out how um, uh, we can participate here and and if this is something we can in the future maybe institutionalize. And of course, always every year dissemination to, to issues of Tibet at Asia. So please feel free to check our call for papers and if you want to have a look, that's uh, homepage number tibet minus online dot Asia. Thanks very much. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little presentation. It's only a very, very small uh, um, part of what we do, but it's a focus. It's a, it's, a, it's a core of what we are doing on focusing it. And um, maybe we find the opportunity to cooperate in the future. We would be very open to it. Thank you. Many thanks, Thomas, for this uh, presentation and insights to the planned activities of the Technical University Dortmund, Technische Universität Dortmund, ich sage es gerne auch in deutscher Sprache. And I want to give the floor uh, now to the Liverpool Hope University, to Dr. Craig Marsh as uh, Executive Dean. And uh, yes, please uh, share, yes, already done. 
Perfect. Many yeah, thanks. thanks. Thank you very much, Urs, and uh, thank you, Giovanni. Thank you for inviting me to uh, to this uh, to this seminar. Uh, delighted to be a, a partner with uh, with Skillman, and this is just a brief introduction um, to uh, Liverpool Hope University and uh, the wonderful city. Uh, that is my home city of uh, of Liverpool. Um, if anybody is not aware of of Liverpool, uh, we are of course as a port city uh, already. Um, internationalism is in our uh, in our DNA, and uh, it is wonderful to be part of such an extensive international network. And I'm just going to say a little bit about the university itself and uh, some of the things that are uh, are coming up uh, with um, uh, with our uh, our work. So, um, give me one second. So um, first of all, just briefly on the city of Liverpool, I'm sure you all know it as uh, as a city of the the Beatles and of, uh, of football. Um, there is another football club called Everton in Liverpool, uh, which is my uh, which is my football club. Hence the reason I've highlighted it there. But one of the things that perhaps you don't know about Liverpool quite so much internationally is it's also uh, now a, a cluster, particularly for manufacturing and particularly manufacturing in the health and life sciences sector. So. Um, it's an incredibly dynamic city, which has rejuvenated over the last 15 years. There's so much going on here, and it really is an engine of growth and innovation. Uh, one of the um, things that is very evident in the region, as is in much of the UK, is that the key, the critical issue is skill shortage for businesses. So part of what the uh, university's mission is, is to provide our, uh, those skills, both for our local and, of course, international businesses. Um, who are we as a, as a university? Well, we've, we're first and foremost uh, a very pretty university uh, in the centre of Liverpool. We, we provide uh, a wonderful space for uh, for learning with, uh, with great facilities, particularly sports facilities. Um, um, but we also have a wonderful place uh, in uh, outdoor, an outdoor centre in North Wales, which is uh, really delightful for some of the um, vocational and action learning uh, type uh, skills development, which uh, which Thomas referred to as being so crucial for the development of uh, vocational skills. Uh, so that we are a small university, um, but we are expanding rapidly. Uh, and as part of our partnership with Skillman, uh, we will, as I, I shall describe in a second, uh, moving directly into the provision of um, of uh, vocational and and uh, uh, and, and employment based education. So, for example, with our undergraduates, we have uh, we already offer uh, what we call a skills passport. Uh, our entire orientation is to developing our uh, students in the skills of employability. Uh, so the skills passport they earn over the three years of their undergraduate education. So for us, it's perfectly natural to be moving into the area of uh, vocational skills. And and so the 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 the, the skills education is embedded through, um, I guess, lectures through working on particular uh, employment projects through uh, participation in um, uh, in uh, directly in employment opportunities with some of our key employers. Um, but I think first and most important, I think for the for Hope, um, we are the only ecumenical university in Europe. So we have an, a, a very strong uh, faith based approach to our education. So. Um, instilled throughout our education are our values of truth, beauty, and goodness. Uh, and so some of the work that we do, particularly in the area of sustainability, um, in terms of ethics, in terms of the impact of all of our students uh, and their future on the planet, these are all uh, interwoven right through uh, all of our educational model. And that will be uh, in evidence in whatever kind of education we offer through, um, through badges. So our... <clears throat> Next um, main area of work is is uh, indeed to introduce digital badges this year. Um, so it was it's been uh, really interesting to be partnered with Skillman and, and to hear from Giovanni about some of the progress that Skillman is now making on digital badges. Um, so our short course provision uh, and micro credentials will be digitally badged, uh, and therefore will benefit from those associations and transferability um, across um, uh, the international network for the individual. Uh, we are also working on a couple of projects. So one of the projects that we have is a women in leadership program, uh, indeed a program in sustainability. Um, but probably more pertinently, we have a great strength in education. We train a lot of teachers. Um, we have a postgraduate certificate in education. And uh, through some of the conversations that we've been having with uh, with uh, Professor Howenstein, who's a, a visiting professor at, at Hope, for example, is to set up in partnership with Skillman uh, a Centre for Vocational Education uh, of excellence, I should say, at Hope, 
um, in education for the blind, which is something that the uh, university and the city is extremely strong in. We have the biggest school for the blind in the United Kingdom, uh, just down the road from us. So we're really looking forward to uh, collaborating uh, with Skillman and across the network um, over all of our um, uh, our uh, offers and and st skills and strengths at Hope, uh, and I look forward very much to getting uh, increasingly involved um, with the International Skillman Network. Uh, so I'll just pass that back to to you now for uh, for the next presentation. Yes. Urs? Probably is frozen. I don't know. Urs, are you on? Uh, probably some problem of connection. I've stunned okay, into I, silence, Giovanni. I I take I take the stage. So Urs, are you on? No. Okay. I would suggest to move on, and then uh, I think it was uh, time for... And thank you very much, Craig, and thank you, Thomas. Just one word, uh, as I'm accidentally here, I would say that this collaboration with you, uh, the Liverpool uh, University, Hope University, is fantastic, and thank you very much. And I would like to remark also why we are here together with Dortmund University, because the intention is to set up together the next uh, meeting, the Alliance Summit together. So I think this was not uh, uh, very clear from my previous presentation. And uh, now, uh, Filippo, I think is your turn to introduce the, the, uh, the um, declaration. I'm going to share the screen for you. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. So inform me when you want, I change the page. Okay, this is the cover, then I move. I cannot yeah, can hear move. you. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay, you can Please. just move to the second slide. Uh, <clears throat> so thank you very much. I, I have the privilege to uh, co-present the legal declaration. The second part will be presented uh, by Giovanni. Uh, this document reflects the work done throughout the whole 2023. Uh, by the Skillman Network, <clears throat> which culminate, culminate in the high-level uh, RIG event. Uh, the document starts with a preamble, uh, recognizing the contribution of the different partners, starting, of course, by the Skillman board and the other actors. Uh, the document uh, identifies the event as a case of best practices in terms of collaboration, peer learning, uh, international partnership, and I couldn't agree more. The declaration moves forward to uh, thank the invaluable cooperation with the Latvian stakeholders, not only in hosting the event in uh, very beautiful premises, but also in uh, <coughs> shaping and organizing and designing the event and even showcasing the best practices, several best practices uh, from Latvia, which we all recognize as one of the international cases of best practice in reforming the education sector. Uh, in the end of the preamble, the declaration also welcomes uh, the participation of the Ukrainian delegation led by the head of the qualification authority, which despite the, of course, enormous challenges the Ukraine is facing that we all know, managed to come, contribute and lead one of the <clears throat> working group session on qualifications. Uh, next slide. So talking uh, more about content, the declaration reflects about the trends affecting our society and the rising priorities for the education system to effectively address them. It starts reflecting on the broad mega trends impacting human capital development systems, in particular the digital and green transition, the dual transition as we call it. It encourages the development of flexible systems able to deal with economic disruption through new forms of qualifications which are able to adapt real time to the evolving requirements of the economy and the society. Uh, it dips in particular into these aspects by elaborating on the importance of micro-credentials and digital credentials as essential tools for achieving the necessary flexibility within the system. I think this aspect has been uh, well described both by uh, Giovanni and Craig. And uh, uh, it's challenging, but I think we are moving forward. 
and this component of the lifelong learning system is actually developing quite well. We will see that there are other aspects of the lifelong learning where we think we need to move much faster. After the declaration takes a side step from the discourse about how education can actually respond to labor market demands, to actually look at what can education do to shape our future society. I'm very glad that this point has been already uh, highlighted by Urs, who actually said that we are now in a moment where we have to shape the society of tomorrow. So the declaration indeed wholeheartedly encourages the integration of social and ethical competences in the curriculum. We have in front of our eyes in Europe, but also in other Western countries, how even our democracies are in difficulties because probably we have not cared enough about creating uh, a new gen new generations of citizens and we only focus more on finding the right workers for our economy. Next slide. When entering into the details of how we can continue reforming education, the declaration, I think, simply challenges us to be bold. Okay, so the introduction of the concept of key competence has been a very slow trend in education. We've started talking about it decades ago, but uh, probably it's now time that key competence become the real standards to assess, to assess students <clears throat> instead of just thematic knowledge. Sorry. Creating a shift between what is fundamental and what is ancillary in education, in the learning process, we think it's the next step. The second principle for which we declaration there's us to be bold, I think, builds on the first one. And it focuses on the fact that if we decided key competence standards should become the reference for assessing education achievement, then we should aim that all students achieve them at the same level. Okay, this is a bold statement. Is really not the case now. Now we do student tracking quite early in education. We group students according to their performance or what, what performance is or what we expect their performance will be. We put them in different education pathways and we pretend that these pathways provide them with a similar key competence, but we very well know that is not really the case. The last element addressed by the declaration is the iteration of the one of the founding principles of Skillman's work and more broadly of the European unions. We are talking about the value and power of network. This can be spelled out in different uh, contexts. The first one refers to the opportunity of policy learning between European countries, a practice which is, has evolved over the decades and has never stopped support reforms in education and other sectors in Europe. And the second level more specifically refers to the cooperation within networks of organization which share common objective and can achieve more by working together and sharing the best practices, out of which, of course, Skillman is one of the most relevant cases in Europe. Uh, next slide. So the next session uh, is about commitments. So the declaration summarizes the commitment of the sign organization towards a real learning society. So here we are looking really at the most ideal uh, version of what we would like to move towards. Mm -hmm. We start by discussing what are the main uh, understandings or state of minds, how we call it, towards the concept of lifelong learning. So the first one is lifelong learning is state of the art, is a sort of optimistic view, not ambitious perspective. It acknowledges the fact that we have done a lot. We have made lifelong learning a, a priority. We have allocated- well, buying number two. We've allocated massive resources to make it happen. Uh, even if results are slow to come, we should continue to insist with the current approach. The second view is the one which is more pessimistic. It builds on the current failures to achieve what we have ourselves set as our targets, both in terms of quality and quantity of lifelong learning. In terms of quality, we realize that in the end is always the same percentage of population, is always the same target group with participate. So it's graduate, is people which usually already have a job, is not actually the population which will need to reform their set of competences. Uh, in terms of quantity, we set up a, a target which no country has achieved, which is the 60% people participate in, another, in, in, in training. It's, uh, there's, I think there's Denmark, which is close but other countries are so far away and we even have one European country I won't mention, but it's below the 1%. So 
this, this anti-vision is, of course, not formulated. It's not on paper. There's nobody actually pretending La Plonene is not important. But if if we are caught in this in this pessimistic view, the risk is that we do not promote investing more resources in lifelong learning, which is like exactly the opposite of what we should do. We should push forward and look at what is not working, and even investing more resources. The third test, the state of mind, is what we call lifelong learning as an ideal, or to be more precise, as the main instrument for the ideal of a learning society. In this is the view we, we, we have as sign of the organizational declaration. So we recognize the value and impact of the current effort, but we insist that much more and much more radical stuff has to be done to achieve uh, a real learning society. More of the same is not enough. Uh, the starting point is very simple. There's no let alone learning when you have very weak com key competences. And we are really, really talking about the most basic key competences. So in 2023, we are still looking at embarrassing data on functional illiteracy, which stands at 28% in Italy and Spain, 22 in France, 8 in Germany. If you can't even make sense of what you're reading, it's quite difficult that you will learn throughout all your life in different contexts and with all different competencies. So what we have to fight with more strength than ever is the assumption that having part of the population which is low or very low educated is inevitable, and that our economy in any case requires low qualified jobs. So this is not a measure problem. It is. So this is the bullshit that we have, should shake from, from our shoulders and start devising policies and plans to raise the human capital level of the whole population, starting from creating um, New strong key competences in all the students within initial education so that these students can use those com key competences to actually engage in lesson learning throughout their life. If we don't achieve this, if you just give them thematic knowledge we're not going to use, you will have a process. In, you have a problem in the labor market, uh, in your society, and in your democratic processes. So this is more or less what we try to push for with the declaration. And I pass the floor to Giovanni. Thank you, Thank you Filippo. Thanks, Filippo. I would say that I have to... Ah, Urs is back. Yes, no, uh, you, you, you see I... uh, disruptions are happening anytime and, and, and you are not prepared for them. So, so many thanks. You know, we need measures, measurements, and tools against disruptions. And you was my tool now to, to, uh, uh, to save the event when I was falling out. So uh, Giovanni, please, your words to the important Riga declaration. Yeah, thanks, Urs. We worked in tandem. I would remember that uh, the, the, our member, um, Professor Rupert McLean uh, is uh, one of the three uh, authors, but of course we followed his uh, drive. Um, I have to apologize because Filippo, where you were present uh, during your pre the presentation, I was in the wrong slide, so probably <laughs> uh, participants noted that. Uh, so, but then uh, I think uh, was un was uh, clear at the end that uh, we have here in front uh, a huge value of uh, statements for the future. So these are our challenges for the future and the richness of these challenges is incredible. This thanks to the contribution of all members and participants to the various activities of 2023 the ministry, the Latvian ministry, and all the colleagues uh, which have uh, promoted uh, the reflection to reflect on what are the challenges. So let's move on with the declaration because uh, we also, uh, I, I mentioned before the tools, the, the life cycle, the framework in which we operate as a skill man uh, and partners and uh, eminent partners network. Uh, but now, what are the contents we put uh, in this uh, annual uh, discussion now on? So we have uh, strategic pathways which uh, constitute uh, the reason why we discuss. So we have these uh, uh, 
basement, which was in, uh, introduced by Filippo. And now we have the, the sectoral uh, pillars. The, we have the arguments that we want to uh, stress. And first is uh, this idea to cultivate uh, an inclusive uh, teaching practice, practices empowering our trainers. So this will be addressed with our peer learning club activities, putting uh, our uh, members in condition to share experiences and to work on this topic. I don't want to spend too much words because I think that all participants are very well, are experts, are very well prepared to uh, to make an understanding of what is stated here, because this is anyway the result of what they said. So for the next period, we will work on empowering our trainers. And this is one challenge that become concrete to answer to the uh, to the previous uh, uh, basement components that Filippo uh, presented to us. Then the second and third point, uh, we have uh, there's two particular aspects and specialized aspects. One is to work on the uh, traditional craft knowledge to integrate this knowledge, to create new workplaces and to uh, provide the skills which normally belongs or normally, sorry, but uh, which uh, we intend uh, for advanced manufacturing, but that, but that can be uh, in a way transferred to uh, to the world of uh, heritage uh, conservation and valorization to create new workplaces we need to reinforce these uh, professions and this is the idea to catch uh, from the advanced manufacturing and to move to the traditional craft knowledge we have a, a specific initiative which is called uh, Trucks for Craft, which is led by University of Antwerpen and the Skillman Network in collaboration with uh, a large number of universities is working on this. The other, the other uh, aspect, which is driven by our member from Rome, uh, which is uh, Stefania Capogna, is uh, our hub and observatory for digital innovation. I think that this observatory is uh, crucial. And there are a set of initiatives uh, under this uh, chapter, we, which will be de uh, deployed, implemented during, the, during 2024 and even the follow, following years. These are um, initiatives which aims to, uh, to detect the changes, to understand the changes in the field of digital innovation, especially in relation with the higher education uh, uh, exercise. So uh, this interdisciplinary research and uh, activity which will involve uh, different kinds of stakeholders is also open to contributions from the members. So please contact the Secretariat to be engaged, if you like, this idea of merging in, the, in one observatory all our uh, analysis, expectations, and uh, to look forward to a better education for the future. The point four, it's, uh, it could appear a little bit uh, unusual for a skilled man, but uh, in effect, we had, we developed a tool for uh, self-assessment in sport, education, and uh, vocational education and training. So, and um, this tool is comprehensive, includes also sport, and it's available to be implemented in the next month. So this will be also something uh, that will be stressed with the training courses to implement the self-assessment tool, to get the certifications and so on. So if you are in sport and you are interested in this topic of uh, gender discrimination, we have this self-assessment tool and this will be um, implemented and supported to be used in the next period by our members. Here we have included in the declaration the Skillman China because uh, as uh, I mentioned before, and all of you I think uh, are aware about this uh, incredible initiative uh, to launch uh, the partnership officially since uh, two years ago, now merged uh, all the efforts in this uh, 
huge event uh, in uh, China in August 2023. So this is a focusing on integrate is titled the focusing on integration and uh, is uh, is a meaning to continue to put the energies and resources in uh, uh, for the establishment or now not the, it's already established but for the uh, reinforcement and uh, running the skillman china i'm i'm sorry that uh, claude bayoun dr claude bayoun uh, cannot be here now because she is in china and she had some problem to connect but uh, so uh, this is a very important initiative that uh, this year will side also with uh, uh, other countries and with india for sure so finally we have uh, an important aspect, uh, which is the glue, which keep together many of our members, which is the ethical values already mentioned by Craig and other colleagues. So the value of Ukrainian participation was stated at the end as a commitment to civic and ethical competencies that we want to stress as a, a must, as a necessary ingredients for the curricula of the of the future, for the curriculum of today, for the society of the future. So if we want peaceful societies, we need to install uh, specific skills into the into the uh, the profiles, into the uh, learning pathways. So we need to um, we need to stress more this aspect and never forget it uh, as it is uh, fundamental uh, in uh, in our uh, in our perspective, I would say. So finally, we have some goal that we want to reach. And I think that uh, it's clear that we have a good mood because the results of the efforts we have put are evident. We have large participation. We have important stakeholders. So we are surrounded by attention from many different uh, supranational organizations which contributes which contribute uh, to our goals so we want we want to reach this uh, contextualization and we want help local uh, uh, local partnerships the so-called coves centers of vocational excellence uh, to renew and to uh, stress uh, tibet agendas as they are leaders of tibet change we need to then help to set uh, all the specific goals that i mentioned before to be implemented. So this is an engagement for the Skillman Secretariat, I would say, to support all partners. We need to create structures and mechanism and uh, even additional network and sub-networks uh, to help this change, to create new platforms like we shown the capacity to do, and then for the next year, and then to, uh, of course, uh, strength, uh, to reinforce these uh, um, capacity to to have uh, professional learning occasions for all uh, our members. So I think, uh, Urs, that uh, I cannot uh, end uh, uh, that just with an invitation to all of us to disseminate, to make uh, advertisement, to promote uh, this uh, knowledge to advocate for adopting uh, the uh, governments and the international agencies, our principles and our vision uh, to stress uh, the capacity of our forum, the Skillman Forum, uh, to create new knowledge on green sustainability, inclusive development, and finally to stay together close and close because it is important uh, to help each other when we have common values to move on in the same direction for a better world. So I think that the Skillman uh, Riga 2023 declaration at the end invites all members and not members to focus what is the best, what is better for the future society. And I want to bring this idea to all of you. Thank you for uh, supporting me in this uh, regard. Many thanks, Giovanni and Filippo, for this for the presentation of this incredible Riga declaration. And I have the honor, honor. to look ahead now 
and invite you as well uh, to be part of our uh, uh, annual summit. Uh, and I just, yeah, just a moment. And I see I have a problem. Maybe I was falling out and before, and I therefore has now to adjust. Because I was falling out before. Alessandro, so, can you help with the presentation of URSS, please? I don't have uh, it. No, I don't have it. Sorry. I okay. open it again. It's not a problem. And uh, then I will be able to share it. I see one hand. Now we are uh, presenting the Alliance proposal. And then after that, uh, Raishin, we will give you the floor. Yes. Thank you very so much. Greetings from sunny Bulgaria. Mm. First, I would like to say thank you to all of you uh, who have a decisive uh, contribution to create from the scratch uh, such a platform, such a network. Uh, thank you as well for being visioners, uh, which is quite important in our turbulent times. I have read very carefully uh, your declaration, and uh, I would like to stress uh, uh, on two key points from my point of view. Mm, who we are, we are a Bulgarian foundation, uh, with, uh, which means a community of IT specialists, IT experts. Uh, being a relatively small country, a lot of my colleagues uh, work uh, worldwide, literally worldwide, uh, because they are IT specialists anyway. And what, what I would like to mention first is from a strategic point of view, um, we have to be realistic. Uh, we are uh, witnesses of the end of Pax Americana, which means that the common agenda of the world now is much more difficult uh, work than before. It means that the world is much more fragmented and probably we see now it will be much more turbulent place for to live. Uh, that's why uh, I think that platforms like uh, this one has a good advantage. He, they ha you have a chance to be a bridge between different fragments of the world, uh, which is in some somehow easier for such platforms for uh, such uh, specific. Uh, contributors than uh, for the governments, than for the, even for the international institutions because of the shortage of confidence uh, and trust to them for many reasons. I will not uh, now discuss why it happens. Uh, and uh, this is the first one. We have such Thank point. You, Rajin, I, I ask I can't ask you to go to the conclusion because we yeah, have the yeah, presentation yeah, yeah. by and yours, the second, then and the, will... the second the second point of bifurcation is uh, uh, artificial intelligence and robotizations, etc. And you could uh, such a platform could contribute to prepare uh, citizens for the new era, era and new lifestyle. What I mean, I mean that uh, it is time to go to, uh, let's say, constructivism, which is uh, andragogic and pedagogic theory, but also it is a practice, which means that uh, it is not, uh, we have not such clear roles between the uh, trainers and the, uh, and the students. And it Thank means you, that... sorry, we okay. have to okay. end because there are other participants also okay. that would like to intervene Thank after. You very much. So after after Ruth's, uh, uh, intervention, uh, then we will open the microphones for uh, thirty seconds, one minute maximum uh, speeches. Okay, Thank you, please. Many thanks, and I will uh, go very quick. 
through uh, um, the uh, high level alien summit. You have seen here the photo. We already saw that. And I want only to net uh, to say again, Skillman is the network of the networks. And we have seen that in Riga, that we have really key partners uh, who are working with us. And that gives us uh, the strength which is needed to go ahead. And, uh, uh, and we need that because the, the goals which we are presenting and we, where we are working on are very important. So uh, we see here, uh, in the Skillman uh, Alliance Summit, and it is really a high level summit, and we are uh, inviting you to come on board. Uh, uh, we have uh, we are working uh, on in 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 Italy or in the Tuscany uh, on on themes to a good future for the world, and uh, we are working in the field of future of work, future of education, future of Tibet but as well on the up reskilling field for the future on micro credential evaluation. We heard that as well from Filippo and others on the digital badges. We heard that from Craig uh, on the green and blue education on the digitization and digitalization of education and on the field of sharing is caring. And uh, uh, I want to mention here we are in the region of Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, I think, is like a founder of the future. When you go, uh, and I hope that we have the chance to go there uh, uh, through his museum in, in Vinci, uh, in his home uh, village, then you can see that he has worked on fields and machines and technology for a future already then times. So, uh, uh, and, and uh, very quick to say, we can't uh, uh, forget that. You see here original photos or all our original photos, which we took in former uh, uh, aliens submits in the Tuscany. So uh, one aim point is the networking with international high level decision makers. You have the chance to sit together with decision makers of world networks. And we are, of course, looking in this discussion and in this networking about mobility projects, Erasmus projects, Horizon projects. When you are interested to be a partner in future research projects and partnerships, then this is as well a good argument to come uh, to our high level stakeholder submit. And of course, you see that here, original photos I have shot by myself. Uh, you have to see arts in the Tuscany, you have to see Italian kitchen. This is lifestyle uh, on a very special way. Uh, and uh, yes, and we have to uh, visit the beautiful countryside this was a photo on the left down where I took from our Skillman Villa uh, 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 in the summit 2021. Okay, so this is the invitation. Please contact the Secretariat of Skillman. Uh, then you will get all the information that you can register to come alongside. And you would be able to sit on the table that is our policy. Uh, uh, inviting members sitting around a table and making a plan, uh, a strategic plan for the next steps of the future. So many thanks. Fantastic. I, would say. I like the table with the food because we are now arriving at that time in Italy. So uh, now uh, we have uh, time open for uh, for remarks and questions by participants and uh, of course that uh, because this was the we are already in delay this was the ending time I was in hurry for that but uh, now we have uh, still time for participants and we can remain the ones that uh, have other commitments can leave they are not uh, 
uh, obliged to remain, but as we have uh, some request uh, for uh, speaking, we can open the microphone for a few minutes and allowing participants to say something. I don't see uh, any hand shaken, but uh, if someone would like to uh, remark something, otherwise we can go to close. So uh, I see Ilze Buligina, Professor Buligina from uh, Latvia. Thank you very much. Ilze, please uh, switch on your microphone and uh, uh, say your Dear thoughts. colleagues, I'll be very short, but what I really want to wanted to say, having been part of the organizing team and knowing how we all worked very hard, what I really wanted to say that regardless of the fact that we all contributed to the content of the document Riga Declaration, I would like to express my sincere appreciation for the small team who managed to formulate all these issues and to put it into a fantastic document in such a coherent and future-oriented way. Thank you very much, and uh, myself and my team are much looking forward to working with the content of this document for implementation in practice in the future to come, because it's very broad, very wise formulation there. Thank you very much, team, for finalizing this document. Many thanks and for these kind, kind words of the Ministry of Education and Science in Latvia, Riga, who are doing an incredible good job. Big compliments back. Thank you so much and good luck to all of us. Thank you, Ilze. Thank you. It's great because when you organize such events and you work together, you have also challenges sometimes. It's very hard. You have no time and then you have to find solutions. But then you create relationships that are forever. So this is my feeling. I think that uh, this expression of appreciation was also including uh, this uh, feeling because we work together to organize the Skillman Forum. And then the results that we have brought out from all this huge work we did uh, in several months uh, and with the support of uh, Professor McLean and, and, the, uh, and the important uh, uh, and absolutely uh, not, uh, um, we couldn't uh, do it without Filippo Del Nino. So it was uh, really uh, an experience, a life experience that I will always remember. So Miranda, please uh, switch on your microphone. Yes. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So uh, I'm really happy to participate in this meeting because um, we have done a meeting before uh, together and uh, I have participated in some Skillman uh, meetings that were, let's say, small. And now they are not only bigger, they are huge. And uh, as you mentioned before, with high uh, level of participation, I couldn't participate last year in uh, uh, Riga, but uh, uh, maybe I will participate this time and I will register to see uh, and to participate because, because we are really interested uh, in collaborating with you uh and uh, share this knowledges uh, i come from duras albania western balkan for the one who don't know where is duras it is uh, in front of uh, bari uh, italy but it is uh, western balkan and it is albanian uh, city i am really interested in uh, cultural heritage as you mentioned because duras is a wonderful city with uh, uh, a lot of heritage and we have uh, some experience in this regard uh, because uh, heritage and uh, handcrafts are uh, as uh, Giovanni mentioned are uh, now um, a little bit apart because these are new technologies uh, now but this cross cut that you uh, uh, that you thought to make with uh, handcraft and technology will be uh, a new possibility for the youths and a new possibility for handcraft not to lose uh, this uh, heritage that uh, most of the countries has and mostly the balkan countries that uh, has this uh, power in uh, 
this regard. So, uh, Marcio, Miranda, looking Miranda, forward I, our future I'm collaboration. A, I'm a follower of you, eh, Miranda. I, I'm waiting that we try the, to we find the way to put in, in concrete uh, practice. Uh, because we have promise. interrupted something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Anyway, we are still you. here. We are still discussing, collaborating, and wish to be together for the future. So I think this is fantastic and is very important. I see on goes all connected. Please. Oh, thank you so much. Are you hearing me? Perfectly, perfectly. Thank you. Um, I'm also from Tanzania, uh, from the National College of Tourism. I'm very glad to be part of this networking team, and I think our colleges actually will benefit positively if we continue networking. And uh, uh, being in a uh, being in a technical uh, college, then these civet issues is actually very important, and we are open for cooperation, open for networking. And I've actually dropped my email there. If anyone or any institution interested in networking, please contact me. Otherwise, thank you so much for the wonderful presentation and how the whole thing is organized. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ongozo. I don't see other other hands. So before to close, I would like to take the occasion to remark my satisfaction for this large participation and the good mood that we can experiment here live. This is a true commitment of all of us to go in the same direction because we think and we believe in a better education. So I have seen also various uh, our national representatives. I already mentioned Germany, but I have seen also uh, part of Latvia. Then I have seen Fran uh, France and so on. So Bernard and many other friends. And from the African countries, there is also large participation. So we are really covering a large part of the world. Uh, so colleagues, what to say now? It's time to close. We are in very big delay and uh, we cannot uh, continue infinity but we have the next occasion so Urz, thank you very much for the presentation and invitation to the alliance i would like to say now we are going to close thanks so much a big applause for everybody and uh, see you next uh, occasion bye bye <laughs>